everybody. I'm Larry Ridley. Welcome to the NFL on EA Sports. Coming up, we'll see two pass rushes that have caused more than a few sleepless nights for quarterbacks and offensive coordinators. It's Khalil Mack and Vaughn Miller. Okay, Larry, we are located a couple miles west of the Colorado State Capitol building here in downtown Denver. The scene a few moments ago, here it is. It's unlike any other in sport as both teams made their way out of the tunnel. These folks are fired up as their guys are ready to do battle between the Oakland Raiders and the Denver Broncos. A pair of 3-0 teams set to lock horns for the right to remain unbeaten. And we're off in week four. And not a bad return here. He gets it out to the 25-yard line. Carry. Here's Marshawn Lynch, and he'll go down right at the 30-yard line. Give him five on the carry there, and it'll be second down. Partner, I think from our experience together, we have learned that most offensive coordinators are going to tell you, if I'm going to run the football on first down, I've got to get at least four yards. they got five here. They've got to feel pretty good about that one. Second down to the offense needing five yards. And the D looking like they may blitz. Car to throw on second down. He rifles one that's intercepted. Picked off by the corner, Bradley Roby. And he will score. Touchdown, Denver. And the defense could not have written a much better script than that first drive, pick six. The offense never got a chance to really get oiled up there, did they? But the defense, they certainly got in gear. What a big-time play and a great way for them to start. And now the offense, they've got to turn things around and figure this out because your backs are on the ground real quickly. Yeah, usually when you're starting the game getting the ball, 0-0 zero, zero is the only score you're worried about. Now the second time you get it, you're already down a touchdown. So they throw the pick six. They'll get another shot at it now as this one's in the air. On the return, here's the dangerous Cordero Patterson. And he'll make it across the 20 as his guys will set up shop at the 23-yard line. So out come the Raiders. And the D-line pinching together must be expecting the run. Now a play fake here on first down. Into a double team, and it's intercepted. It's Chris Harris with a pick. And they get the football. They'll set up shop at their own 49-yard line. Oh, timing is everything on a route like this. He tried to drive that football into a tight spot. And if you're a little early or a little late, chances are there's going to be someone there. And sure enough, this one's going the other way. to 10 Kelly and his throw here's incomplete Emmanuel Sanders the intended receiver and that'll bring up second down had an open man that time but ended up putting a little too much heat on it don't you think partner absolutely just needed a touch more air under it instead he fired an absolute bullet So the incomplete pass brings up second down. Takes to midfield, but no further. Just a yard there. 
Nice job there on the tackle. Keep him to the short gain. And, of course, he got some good news this week. He was named AFC Defensive Player of the Week from last week's effort. And part of the reason he got that award, because of plays like that. Not every play is spectacular. Not every play is for a loss. Make the plays that are in front of you. Keep it to short gains, and you pile up statistics. On third down. That's Newman, and he's going to be stopped up at about the 47-yard line. Two yards on the pick up there. It's fourth down. Fourth down, so on is the punter, Riley Dixon. He was only asked to punt once in the victory last week as he sends this one away. And a great job on special teams to down it as this will be marked out inside the five-yard line. And now Oakland ready to take the field. And job one here, Charles, just keep possession of the football. Two drives, two turnovers to this point. You're exactly right, Doctor. Hippocratic Oath, first do no harm. And right now they're harming themselves on offense. I like that. No one is mistaking me for a doctor, though. But thank you, Dr. Davis. They'll start on the ground with Lynch. And not much there as he gets it up to about the five-yard line. Just a yard on the first down carry, so it's second and nine. That first down play, all you want to do is wedge out any type of space and try and create enough room that if you have to run the punter out there, he can successfully complete the punt. Yeah, he didn't get a ton there, but at least some positive yardage. And after the play on the ground, that brings up second down here. Back near his goal line, here's Carr. And he'll hit the slant route, that's caught by Cooper. And able to get it across the 10 to the 15. Try to escape the shadow of their goalpost. That helped. 10 yards. First down. Yeah, the defense definitely showing blitz here. On first down, Carr. And here's another interception, the third of this first quarter. It's Chris Harris with a pick. So that's back-to-back -back drives where they've thrown an interception. Ordinarily, we look at the offense and say, what's going on with your scheme? Maybe we should look at the defense and just give them a whole lot of credit. They've got them frustrated right now. here on first down and the catch made this is Emmanuel Sanders and a nice gain of 21 yards I don't care who you put on him he's gonna be a handful in one-on-one -on -one throws yeah right now you're right they're in man-to-man -man. maybe need some safety help I would say that'd be a good idea double team him somehow I'm gonna have to make someone else beat me rather than let him shred my defense On first down, it's Kelly. Toward the center of the field, but it's incomplete. Normally, he's pretty reliable. He usually catches what's thrown to him. On that play, he simply dropped it. So they're still at the original line of scrimmage here. Second down and 10. And now whistles and a flag, and I think we got a jump here. So five yards there is one of the big guys up front moved. And in a 4-3 front, you've got the two defensive tackles right near the football. I know there's a lot of movement around there, but they're always taught to have one eye on the football. Apparently, that didn't happen. Now contact up front as penalty markers come in. Who is this against? Jumpy on the right side of the line. Sometimes when you're on the end, a little bit farther away from the ball, any type of movement will get you to jump, and that's exactly what happened there. First down throw, Kelly. This is caught. 
And he couldn't quite get there. Tackled down at the one. Now it looks like we've got a Bronco that's banged up on the play. We'll step aside and get a report when we come back to Denver. And they're definitely showing blitz here. They come out here in the eye. And to give this time to the tailback. And he will take it in for a Bronco touchdown. A great effort there. His fifth touchdown now on the year. And the Broncos will add on to their lead. And he's able to put it through. McManus on to kick this one off. This one fielded at the five. <laughs> and he'll take it up past the 25 to the 26-yard line. The Raider offense now making their way toward the huddle. Already down two touchdowns here in the first half. This becomes a pretty important drive, doesn't it? It certainly does, and a lot of the teams script plays. We know that, right? They, they have a script to start the ball game, and typically those scripts go between 12 and 24, 25 plays. Down two touchdowns early, probably not very deep into their script. I think they'll stay with it. I don't think they'll abandon it just yet and try and generate some offense on this drive. Anything, at least three points get that zero off the board. It'll be a loss of a yard, and that'll bring up a second and 11. Sack looking up at a third and long. Working from the gun, it's Carr. He'll rifle this one deep right, and his pass is intercepted for the fourth time today. He's picked off at his own 47, and he's able to get it back to right around the 27. We haven't even escaped the first half, and he's already thrown four picks. And Brandon, back in the good old days, probably back before you were born, if your starter threw four in the first half, he might throw eight or more for the game because they weren't going to pull him out. But nowadays, the patience level isn't quite there. He's going to have to make some real adjustments, or the backup may see some time. And some room to roam now. And taking it to the 15-yard line before he's brought down. A Bronco first down there, 12 yards on the play. So let me make sure I have this right. He's already found the end zone once, and now he's ripped off a big chunk of yardage here on this one. His confidence is awfully high. So now I've got to put myself in the shoes of the defensive coordinator. Do I go ahead and sell out to try and stop him and force him to do something different, or do I risk him having a big monster day against my defense? Kelly on first and ten. And it's caught. And he couldn't quite get there. Tackled down at the one. A nice pickup of 14. And it moves the stick. Sets up a first and goal. First and goal. They'll look to smash it in. Maybe a quarterback sneak here. Looks like the defense in press coverage here to throw Kelly and he is going to go down back at the 11-yard line Alden Smith coming hard on the blitz he dumps him for a loss of eight he took a hit on that last play now let's see how he and the offense respond on second A play fake. Now Kelly. And this is caught for a Bronco touchdown. 
Well, Brandon, if we go back to our meeting with the offensive coordinator, he showed us his script. Didn't show us everything now. He said, here's the script for the game. I think everything's going according to plan in a big way. Three drives, three touchdowns. Yeah, that's about as good as that is as good as you can do, I guess. So well done. Yeah, well done indeed. Tremendous execution. Now McManus on to kick this one off. This will be fielded at the six. Oh, he's got a little daylight. And he will take this one all the way back inside the 35-yard line. I know the special teams coach will not permit himself a smile here, but inside, he's glowing. This is what he practices for. This is what he schemes. This is what he watches tape to put himself and his team in a position to score points, an absolute dream return. They go back to the air here after the INT on the last drive. And inside the 20 before he's brought down. Give him a first down, 15 yards that time for the Raiders. Carnell on first down. Obviously, this has not been a banner game throwing the football. So what you got to do, you got to kind of down focus, don't you think? Find the tight end, take some easier completions. Yeah, interception last drive. There he hits the reliable target. Second down, Lynch. And he is met at the line of scrimmage, and he goes down right there. They'll say no gain on the play there, and now it'll be third down. Sometimes play calls boil down to philosophy. You know you're facing one of the top ten units against the run in the NFL. So do you decide to keep smashing against them, or do you decide to throw the ball here? From the gun now on third down, Carr, and it's intercepted at the goal line. It's Chris Harris with a pick, past the 10 to the 11-yard line, and that's where the return stops. And that gives him now three interceptions in the game. Well, someone's locked into what they're trying to get done in the passing game. When was the last time we had someone get three in a, in a contest? 2011, wasn't it? Kurt Coleman. Oh, yeah, that's Then right. with the Eagles. That's right. Then against the, with the Eagles, and I believe it's against Washington and Rex Grossman. That's correct. Now they'll run it on the toss. It's a loss of a yard there, and now second down. And the pursuit that time was absolutely top-notch. He was looking to try and turn upfield somewhere. Kept trying to find a place. Somewhere never showed up. Back alongside Charles Davis, I'm Brandon Gordon. It's Bronco football to begin quarter number two, but they face a second and long to start things out. complete to his tight end. Six yards is the pickup, and that'll lead to a third down. When you execute a drag or a crossing route really well and give them a chance to let it develop a little bit, you can gain some significant yardage hitting your tight end on that one. And on third down, a nickel formation here defensively. From the gun, Kelly. Open man, and that's his tight end, Jake Bunt. He's at the 40. And he'll be down deep into Oakland territory. A big play there on the catch and run. 65 yards. Right. 
forward for three down to the 16-yard line. Well, that call makes sense because they've been throwing it well on this drive, and once again, they show passing formation, showing the shotgun. Then they ran out of it. That's a nice play by them defensively, though, to hold it to a short game. Staff's doing a good job upstairs. They'll file away what they just saw from the defense right there. They sold out to stop that running play. I'd say keep that in mind. They want to try that again. Go play action and hit them over the top. And on third and three, they decided to go with a dime package. Yeah. Six DBs. Yeah, you're right. They've got six out there. before he's tackled at the five. It's a gain of six as they're able to convert, and now it's first and goal. on this one. Losing yardage to the seven. That's going to go as a loss of a yard, and it'll be second down. Cleo Mack's starting to get a really big-time reputation as a pass rusher, and rightly so. So explosive off the edge getting to the quarterback, but he doesn't neglect his run duties as well. How about that tackle right there? Such a package he has, able to play the run and the pass so well. They'll try a little trickery here on the end around. <laughs> And he is knocked down from the side at the three-yard line. Give him right around four on the carry. We'll see if they want to keep pounding here on third and goal. give this defense some credit now. They let the guys get downfield, but when push came to shove, they stood their ground, and now they'll likely force a field goal attempt. And McManus able to put it through, and that stretches this lead even further. It's now 24 to nothing. So give them three there. A good drive gets them inside the five, but they couldn't punch it in. And credit this defense, too. That was the old bend, but don't break approach, but it kept the offense out of the end zone. And you combine a big leg with a mile high air. There's the outcome. This will sail out of the end zone for a touchback. The Raiders offense now. They trot back out. And the interception thrown in the red zone last time. We'll see if they can rebound. I just have to think the last thing he said as they went back out there was, don't do that again. What do you think? <laughs> what do you think? Yeah, I think that. I think that not only did he say that, but he also told him, let's put it in the end zone that it's supposed to be in, all right? The end zone we're trying to score. I know we're being a little bit facetious here, but the bottom line is take care of the football and everything else should flow from there. Quick lesson, never ask the play-by-play -play <laughs> guy a question. Hey, you're my partner. I know you're right there with me. Keep pounding here with Lynch, and he'll be brought down right around the 37. The gain of four that time as the drive continues. Exactly what they needed right there, because they needed to use the ground game to take some pressure off, because the quarterback's been struggling a little bit. Throwing on first down is Carr. And that's going to wind up incomplete. However, we do have a flag down. Let's check in with our referee.
So the offense has it first and 10. Throwing now is Carr. Over the middle, Cooper with it. And inside the 20 before he's brought down. Another big gainer that time. This one goes for 19 yards. That was a nicely run slant route, and what the receiver's trying to do is make the defender think he's going upfield for a deeper route, and then breaks it off, usually after about three to four steps, and cuts towards the middle of the field. And now what he's trying to do is use his body to keep the defender away from the football and get the quarterback a really nice target. Second down, here's Carr. Cook with a first down and much more. And stopped a few yards shy of the goal line at the three. A Raiders first down, Carr hooking up with Cook. And now the passing game here in the second quarter starting to heat up a little bit. Don't you feel the rhythm starting to happen, right? You see it now, the confidence is starting to rise. I think now as a play caller, because that has happened, you lean on it a little bit more. You don't go totally away from running the football, but you do say, guess what? We can throw it, we can throw it well with a whole lot of confidence. He'll get only two there, and it's second and goal. I think it's okay there. They didn't get a whole lot on that play, but it's nice to have a safety valve that's built like this guy. Big target, guy you can spot pretty easily. Put it on him when your other targets aren't open. Carr keeps it on the sneak. And he's over the line and in for a Raider touchdown. Derek Carr, his first touchdown on the year. And the Raiders get a score closer. He's got it, and that makes our score 24 to 7. Out is the kickoff unit as they run up and send this one away. This one fielded at the five. He's got the lane, and there he goes. He's at the 30, 10, and all the way home for the Broncos score. I know a lot of special teams coaches, they just want to keep it away from him because that's what he can do. And others have egos that their players can't keep up with, and they say challenge him, kick it to him. The way he runs, as fast as he is, I wouldn't challenge him at all. I'd do everything possible to keep it away. He is just a blur when he gets a full head of steam, and he got a full head of steam there. And they will not get a chance to return this one as it's through the end zone for a touchback. Now the Raiders offense, they get set to head back on the field. I guess they have to feel a little gratified to at least get on the board last time, but still work to do. No doubt about it. I wonder now if they're going to try to increase the urgency a little bit, maybe pump up the pace, maybe go two minute. Who knows? Let's see what they decide to do. The game clock setting at 2.02, so they'll get one play before the two-minute warning. and 10. Here's Carr. And he rips that one incomplete there. Two minutes to go here in the first half. Back to Denver right after this. Offense still needing 10 yards. Second down. again. Carr. He'll be brought down by the Broncos. It's a sack. Von Miller. He's the one to get him, and that's sack number seven for him on the year. Carr and the Raiders following the sack, looking up at a third and long. Third down, they go Lynch. A great effort there to shed the contact, and it helps him pick up the first. A big run there, 29 yards and a first. 
Well, you know what they say about the best laid plans, partner. <laughs> I mean, this one was totally foiled. They played for the pass. The idea was if you want to run it, that's fine. We'll rally up and make the tackle, except they didn't get it done. <laughs> yeah, third and long and a big run there. How about that? Car now on first down. And Cook has it left side. And he'll get it out a couple yards shy of midfield at the 48. Seven yards, the pickup on the pitch and catch. Not a big window to throw. Coverage wasn't too bad there. Yeah, they had him under wraps pretty well, but somehow able to muscle his way open and catch the ball. Now Carr throwing on second down. And the hit jarred it loose. It's incomplete. But one thing that I've liked defensively is that they've shown them a lot of different looks here in the first half. They've come after them. They've sat back. I think that's what you need to do to keep an offense guessing. And they certainly have kept them on their toes. That's why they haven't had much success on the scoreboard. Here comes the D swarming to the line. They'll run it. Here's Lynch. And he's got the first down yardage there as he takes it just across midfield. And now we won't see a play on first down. We're going to get a timeout instead as they'll stop it with a little over 30 seconds to go in the first half of play. And a new set of downs here after picking up the first on the ground. Carr. And it pops free. The collision there jarred the ball loose and brings up second down. Let's face it, if you want to get back into the game, these are the kind of throws you got to hit. He's wide open right there. Got to be able to get it to him, don't you think? And those are the throws that haven't been available to them every time he's dropped a pass. Yeah, that's a big miss. Back to the air on second down. It's Carr. And that is incomplete. Jared Cook, the tight end, was the target. And it's third down. I know our vantage point might be a little bit better way up here. But that looked like an ill-advised throw to me. I didn't see anything open. And this play just didn't look right from the beginning. It did not. I thought he might get outside and just chuck it away. Dangerous pass incomplete. The Raiders on third down. They've hit two for four thus far. This is third and ten. Throwing his car on third down. Steps away to his left. Now he'll let it go on the run. He's got it. Hit the 15. An excellent pickup of 34 yards. We talk about mobility on quarterbacks all the time. Here's where it really pays off. Able to move, evade, and is accurate throwing on the run and picking up a first down. Into the red zone. It's Carr. He couldn't quite hold it. Got hit. Ball pops out, incomplete. It's a lot of contact going on there, and in the end, unable to keep two hands on the football and bring it into his body. Everything looked pretty good until the finish, and the offense readies for play number 10 of this series. Carr again here on second and 10. Forced out to his left. The improv act there, good for nine, and now they'll be looking at a third and short, third and one. Now a timeout taken. Perhaps a chance for one more quick play and then another timeout if they hurry. We'll see. Around the NFL, an update from a game going on down in Tampa, and the Bucks are out to an early lead. I have a feeling that one's going to stay tight throughout. We'll continue to monitor. Car to throw on third and one. And this is incomplete, with a clock showing just three seconds left. Perhaps they overthought this one a little bit. They've been running it real well on this drive, and it was third and short, okay? They decided to throw the football incomplete. Yeah, they might have thought just a little bit too hard about that play selection. We have hit halftime. Still two more corners. You're throwing the touchdown or you're throwing the check down. But earlier in the game, it was touchdown or interception. Now he got to the check down, a nice safe throw, and a good one. Sometimes the coverage is so good, no matter what you're doing on offense, you just can't shake anyone free. They try their best to find someone open, but they took away every passing alley, every angle, and shut the play down. Offense looking to avoid a third and long. It's second and 10. Right, right, right. 
to throw again. Carr. And he'll be taken down, but not before he gets into enemy territory. 14 yards is the pickup there in a Raider first. Well, they obviously read man coverage there, partner, and he got downfield, broke down the defender, made him what think. What do you mean by that? Bro, bro. Yeah, he made him think he was going to run a different route, probably thought he was going to take it upfield, and then he curls back inside for the completion. The play clock's running down. On first down, Carr. And no escaping this time as he'll go down. They got him for a sack. Adam Gonsis able to collapse the pocket and drop him for a loss of a yard. And some extras coming up on the line here, Redding for the blitz. Carr to throw on second down. Escaping the pressure right. Throwing right, and that's complete. And he'll be taken down, but not before getting this inside the 30. Now, after the completion, we're going to get a timeout, an injured player. We'll step aside and get a report when we come back to Denver. So after that big gain, let's see what else the offense has up its sleeve. First down, Carr. And he'll be a couple yards shy of the red zone here at the 22-yard line. He'll wind up getting right about four there on the scramble, and it's second down. How about a tip of the cap to the defense? They're working against a very mobile quarterback, but all day long they've kept him under wraps. And on that play, they held him to a short gain. Six yards here to go for the offense on second down. Operating from the gun. Carr. And he drops it incomplete. And their struggles continue here. But plain and simple, that's the second time today that he's dropped a pass. And that one, I think, maybe even a little easier than the earlier one that he dropped. Surprising. Was this game announced as a night game prior to, and maybe his rhythm got is just off? He's got know. thrown off. He's got to wake up, enjoy the sunshine, and go play. The Raiders on third down. They've hit at 50%, three of six to this point. This will be third and six. Carr gives to Lynch on the draw. And he picks up the first down yardage as he takes it down to the 16. It's a seven-yard gain there, and it's good enough to move the chains. From the red zone now, they'll look to throw. And it pops free. The collision there jarred the ball loose and brings up second down. That's very well timed there defensively because it's not a bad throw, but the collision came at the exact time he was reaching to bring in the football. Really, really well done. Decent offense, just better defense. I think you're right. They'll run it now out of the gun. And he's going to fight his way forward here for a modest gain. Give him four on the ground there. They're now left with third and six. Not too many offenses want to turn down long drives, but when you're down what they are, they've got to pay it off with some points. to throw on third down. Carr, the quick slant caught. He didn't get the touchdown, but he did get the first down as he's tackled at the one. And the seemingly endless drive continues. Carr now to throw. And he will not get away. He sacked back around the three-yard line. The amount of sacks that they've absorbed in this game is absolutely extraordinary. Let's just face it. This offensive line, flat out, cannot handle this pass rush. It's been demonstrated time and time again. Looking to throw on second down. Carr, the quick slant caught. And he'll be brought down right on the edge of the goal line at about the one-yard line. A touchdown saving tackle there. Now it's third and goal. Got to figure this is one they need here on third and goal. 
They come out with one back, and he is in. Touchdown, Raiders. Derek Carr, his 10th touchdown of the season, second of the game. And the Raiders make some inroads here on that deficit. Now this time, Carl throw, and he's got it for the two-point conversion. So they tack on a pair more here to narrow that deficit a bit further. The kickoff unit is out on the field, and they will send this one away. And this will be a touchback as that sails over the inline. Now the Broncos offense, they get set to head back onto the field. This is sort of what you would call a put-away drive, isn't it? I mean, they score here, especially a touchdown. It's almost out of reach. It certainly feels that way, and I think that they're going to call their plays accordingly because what you really want to do, even though you know the scoreboard is still up there and the game's going to go on, in fact, you can take the spirit away from another team. That Their drive and will to come back and win can be taken with another score right here. Yeah, still third quarter, but you just get that feel. Yeah, they're teetering right there on the brink, aren't they? Oh, he's got some breathing room. A big seam, and he might go all the way. And all the way home for a Bronco score. A great play there second TD of the game, his sixth on the year, and the Broncos will extend their lead. And he's been a busy man, five for five now as he knocks another one through to extend the lead. Now McManus on to kick this one off. This is taken at his four. And he'll get it up to about the 26-yard line just across the 25. And now here come the Raiders. And they're going to need another score. Got one last time, but still down here. When you're playing catch-up, every possession becomes crucial, doesn't it? It's vital. Get back out on the field, punch it in the end zone again. They know it's not easy, but what they do have going for them, they did score the last time. They think they've got a good formula working. And what about the defense? Well, now you're just saying to yourself, okay. And my goodness, another interception. But how about this? It's the other Brandon Marshall that picks it off. And his guys are going to get the football at the 37-yard line. Here's the Denver offense now as they get set to take over here. And they hit the home run last drive. One play on the ground all the way to the house. Now the defense, maybe they're expecting a run here. Partner, I love your description because when we talk about hitting the home run, we're usually thinking about a passing play, aren't we? Something in the air, deep ball. But how about them just taking it? Big time jaunt. Now if you're coming back out, now they've established this run game, the play action pass could very well be open. I'm ready now for second and nine. Now let's go. Blue lining. Blue lining. Welcome back now to Denver. A lot of happy faces in the crowd at this point as their guys have a big lead here to start quarter number four. So second and nine, the defense looking to put them in a bad spot here. Now they'll run it on the toss. And maybe a measure of revenge there. He's had his way in this one, but this time they get him behind the line. They'll wind up losing four yards on the play. And that's going to lead to a third and 12. He is knocked down hard. It'll be a pickup of 16 and a Bronco first down. Do my eyes deceive me, or is he getting stronger as this game moves along? Burst seems just as good here in the fourth as it was way back in the first, doesn't it? I do believe someone put a lot of time in in the offseason and continues to condition during the season in order to continue to carry the ball at this rate. 
Here's a carry for the fullback. This is Andy Janovich. And oh, he coughed it up. But fortunately, he's able to recover his own fumble, or that could have been trouble. But call it luck or skill, whatever the case is, they're feeling good about just keeping the football there. Yeah, the biggest thing that they're calling it now, our ball. <laughs> I mean, they don't care if it was luck or skill, but the panic that jumps up in your chest when that ball's on the ground, whether you get it or your teammate gets it, just as long as you maintain possession, that's all you're looking for. Now Kelly. That is caught right at the 10-yard line. And able to get him down, but he does reach the five. 18 yards there, and it'll be a first and goal. Well, a clear running situation, trying to take time off the clock. He ran the previous play, set that play action up nicely. Boy, did they ever, because they had shown the ability to run the football, so now you lose your keys as a defense. You dive for the running play, and they hit them over the top. They'll come out in the pistol. Operating from the gun. And this will be incomplete. So he can't hang on. And as I watch that unfold, I remembered an expression that I've heard. Maybe from you. I don't know. But you're going to get hit anyways. Might as well hold on to the ball. Right, you know a coach <laughs> said that, right? Yeah. Not an actual player. Not a chance at all. Way easier said than done. Hurry up. Here we go. Three, three. And some strong running. Now they'll pitch it out here. And he will fight his way into the end zone for a Bronco touchdown. A great effort there with his third touchdown of the game, number seven on the year. And the Broncos continue to pour it on. And the lead is now an even 30. McManus on to kick this one off. And this will not be returnable. It's out of the back of the end zone for a touchback. The Raiders offense now. They trot back out. And last time wasn't pretty. One play and an interception. We'll see if they can do better. I want to see if they want to go ahead and throw the ball again now on this drive after what happened on the last one. Throw it on the first play. Give the quarterback <laughs> some confidence. See what happens. Shake off the interception from the last drive. He'll look to throw. And the Broncos get there and take him down. Von Miller, he's the one to get him. And that's sack number seven for him on the year. To throw on second down. Carr dancing to his left. And he drops it incomplete. And their struggles continue here. Brandon, at least there's one bright side to that incompletion. What's that? It wasn't an interception. Wow. <laughs> you're, you're a nice guy. That was kind of savage. But correct. No, no pick, just incomplete that time. On third and long, it's Carr. And he fires one, but incomplete. Well, they're slinging it. And then there's one you got to put a timer on, huh? I mean, that one came in hot. That yeah, came in hot, but overthrown out of his reach and incomplete. He only punted twice in the win last week as he gets this one away. And take it right on the 30. time he's smothered as he's wrestled down at the 46. A nice job on the return there. 16 yards. And the Broncos take over. First down and 10. Time to the tailback. 
And for one of the few times here today, this run's not going to go anywhere. No gain on the play. It'll be second down. Brandon's all about pace and tempo now for them. They've got the advantage, so I'm going to put musical terms for you. You don't want to go prestissimo. That's too quick, too lively, right? But you also don't want to slow it down too much. You don't want to go lento. What you really want to be is moderato. Nice and even, nice and steady. Get those gains and close out the game. I think that chicken parm from last night's gone to your head. <laughs> The Broncos on third down. They've hit at 50%, three of six to this point. They need just a yard here. It's third and one. And on the ground they go with a running back. And some room to work. The 20. And he takes it into the end zone across the chalk. Now there is a flag down. But I think that's offsides on the defense. Yeah, I think that's going to stand, partner. Now McManus for the extra point. And this one was over a while ago as they just add on to their big lead. Now McManus on to kick this one off. This one fielded at the five. Spinning past him. And a nice return sets him up pretty good here at the 30-yard line. The Raiders offense now making their way back out onto the field. And on the last go around, they really couldn't get anything going. They had to punt from deep inside their own territory, which means you're going to lose the field position battle as a general rule. What they're looking for now is a little more consistency, move the ball at least a few times on offense, get a couple of first downs, and hopefully flip the field. Well, just something to build off of. That's what they're looking for here. And now here is another interception. Picked off by the corner, Bradley Roby. And he's able to take this one back to the 36-yard line. Charles, whatever's going on between his ears right now, it's just not completely calculated correctly. Seven picks between last week and this week after that one. And they always say the most important part of a player is those six inches between the ears. But right now, it's all those interceptions that are going on. So whoever his trusted confidant is on the sidelines, I don't know if it's the offense coordinator, the quarterback's coach, maybe the backup quarterback, that's who he needs to get with now and get himself calm. Now a handoff as they run left side. And maybe a measure of revenge there. He's had his way in this one, but this time they get him behind the line. It'll be a loss of one, and it'll be second and 11. Double tight, double tight. Now let's go! Five, five, now a handoff here to his running back, and he'll get three down to the 34-yard line. Well, so many times we look at a short run and we praise the offense for trying to set the tempo and establish things, but the defensive guys, hey, they just won the battle there. It wasn't a big run given up. They don't always have to absorb the body blows. Sometimes they dish them out themselves. The Broncos on third down. They've hit four of seven. This is third and eight. They'll run it now out of the gun. And some space here. And he'll be brought down at the 27-yard line. A good gain there on third and eight of seven yards, and now a decision here on fourth and one. Now Brandon McManus for the Bronco field goal. From the right hash, this from 44 yards out. And McManus able to put it through. And they're sitting pretty now as the lead grows even further. So it's three more points, and that widens things out even further here in the fourth. Hey, in this league, you can never have too much. So if you're in range, grab the three whenever you can. 
And they will not get a chance to return this one as it's through the end zone for a touchback. Now the Oakland offense heading back onto the field to take over. They are just obviously getting shellacked here in this one, Charles. What's, what's the message if you're a coach for this final drive in a lopsided game like this? For a lot of coaches, be honest. Don't forget today. <laughs> Don't forget what has happened out here. Yeah, use that as ammo exactly. going forward. Exactly. Take a great look at that scoreboard. Realize how poorly everything went for us today. Coaching, playing, the whole deal. And never forget it because... You're not going to want that feeling. No, either. you don't want that feeling again. And who knows? You may meet up with this team again. And running room scarce here. He's going to be stopped in his tracks at the line of scrimmage. And he got off the end there very quickly to make that play. Yeah, it was almost like the bullet train, wasn't it? I mean, just zoom. Quick, quick, quick. And what a terrific play. Holding them to no gain. The improv act there. Good for nine. And now they'll be looking at a third and short. Third and one. Well, he did a nice job keeping his eyes downfield, waiting for someone to get open. But once the pressure forced his eyes down to see the rush, it was time to make a break for it. The Raiders on third down. They're hitting at 60%, six out of 10 thus far. They're up against a third and one situation. And he gets this one across midfield for the first down to the 46. Seven yards there, good enough to move the sticks. Car now on first down. And he'll go down inside the 45 before going out of bounds. Call it a three-yard gain, and it'll be a second down. Everyone's got to be able to catch the football. Doesn't matter what position you play, but if you're on offense, be aware, ball may come your way. Looking to throw on second down. Carr, he gets this one to Michael Crabtree. And brought down, but able to get it to their 30-yard line. Car to Crabtree, good for a Raider first down. On first and 10, Carr. Oh, he dropped it. And that's pretty indicative of the way this one's gone. This defense was definitely alert to the possibility of the deep ball, and they were more than ready for it. They've got the lead, fourth quarter. Maybe can expect more passes like that downfield. And some changes here as the D-line separates some. Now Carr over the middle. He gets it to Patterson. And down inside the 15, shy of the 10. They've got another first down. The Raider passing game clicking on all cylinders right now. Carr going to throw. This will be caught just inside the 10. And he's across for the touchdown. Too little, too late. But he does get in for six. No wonder you're grinning. You just beat me in our fantasy league. Indeed I did, my good man. That's a whole lot of points still to be down. But congratulations, they're still fighting, and they scored another touchdown. My old high school coach used to say, Charles, he said, sometimes you win, sometimes you lose, and sometimes you wish you never had showed up. <laughs> Could have saved the gas money, the hotel, <laughs> what have you, huh? This is taken at his four. And he'll be taken down just past the 20 at about the 21-yard line. The Bronco offense now set to come back out onto the field. And this game comfortably in hand. The scoreboard speaks for itself, but you still got your starting quarterback out there. When, when do you go to the backup? Let him get some time. And that's one of the great questions in the NFL, Brandon, because I'm just going to tell you, in the 2015 season...